My name is Borbe Ruben, and uh, I'm going to present you the uh, following presentation. Uh, the title is Uses of CT Imaging in Acute Pancreatitis Severity Prediction and Diagnosis of Splunknic Vein Thrombosis. A bit about me, I'm a third year radiology resident in Bacsi Zielinski Hospital in Budapest and uh, I'm a first year PhD student. Um, my vision is to improve care for patients with acute pancreatitis and the mission is to enhance the diagnostic and prognostic value of CT imaging in acute pancreatitis. Uh, my specific goals are the following. Uh, first project is investigating the prevalence of slunk vein thrombosis in the early phase of acute pancreatitis. This is going to be a systematic review and hopefully a meta-analysis. Uh, project started in September this year. The second project is investigating the effect of body fat distribution on the outcomes of patients with acute pancreatitis. And we're going to do a registry analysis. Um, regarding the first project, I'm working with Balin Gellert and Brian Philip. Uh, so SVT, or splunknic vein thrombosis, is present in around 5 to 26 percent of AP cases, but the prevalence in the early phase is currently unknown. Um, regarding the modality, ultrasound, CT, and MRI can all diagnose SVT, but uh, ultrasound is sometimes obstructed by bowel gas, and it can be partially diagnostic or completely undiagnostic. And uh, this leads to the case that SVT can be missed in a couple of uh, situations. And I'm going to show you the guidelines to uh, highlight those situations. So when the acute pancreatitis has an atypical presentation, uh, CT and MRI is uh, warranted uh, as a first-line imaging modality. And um, those can detect SVT. And when we have a typical presentation, uh, we start with an ultrasound only. And uh, if the etiology is clear on the ultrasound, uh, no further imaging is required. And this, uh, this is the case when SVT can be missed. Um, and the rationale is that uh, CT and MRI can uh, show uh, necrosis after 72 hours uh, uh, confidently. If the ultrasound is undiagnostic, we go to CT and MRI, and those can diagnose SVT. Uh, untreated SVT can progress and uh, lead to worse patient outcomes, uh, according to some data. Uh, so it is our aim to understand the relationship between uh, SVT and the early phase of AP. Uh, so the question is, what is the prevalence in the early phase? Um, and we look at it with a COCOPOP framework. Uh, condition is SVT uh, diagnosed by any kind of imaging in the early phase in the patients hospitalized with AP. And hypothesis is that uh, it is uh, more uh, frequent uh, than previously estimated. The clinical and uh, research implication is that uh, there should be more rigorous imaging protocols for the benefit of patients, of course. We have done the systematic search with the following search key. It has three domains. First, we were looking at acute pancreatitis. Uh, the second is uh, the veins and, and the names of the veins and the abbreviation of the veins uh, and some kind of uh, term related to thrombosis. Uh, with light green, or just the abbreviation of the thrombosis type with gray. We had around 12,500 hits. Uh, we had done the duplicate removal, the, uh, and uh, we have done the full text selection also. We currently are working on the uh, data extraction. So regarding the second project, uh, it's investigating the effect of body fat distribution on the outcome of patients uh, with acute pancreatitis. Uh, we know that uh, uh, obesity and overweightness is a huge problem in today's society. A huge proportion of adults have it. And uh, there is a, a really wide uh, data that uh, BMI correlates with uh, pancreatitis severity and mortality. 
And some algorithms uh, include uh, BMI to account for uh, this uh, overweight uh, population. And, uh, but the problem is that uh, BMI is only an estimation of uh, uh, body composition and not an accurate measure. Uh, CT and MRI is the gold standard to calculate it. And we would like to understand with this project the uh, relationship between CT and the positive metrics and the AP severity. So the clinical question is, uh, do these uh, CT calculated metrics like uh, body fat percentage, visceral fat ratio, subcutaneous fat ratio, or skeletal muscle attenuation uh, show an excess risk uh, for the severity and complications of AP. And uh, the framework is a PFO. Uh, population is uh, the patients from the Hungarian Acute Pancreatitis Registry who had a CT, of course. Uh, factor is uh, high body fat uh, calculated by the metrics and BMI. And uh, the outcome will be mortality, severity, and uh, local, complication, local and systemic complications. And hypothesis is that uh, these metrics can show that uh, high body fat is a risk for a worse outcome. And the clinical and research implication is that severity predicting algorithms would become more accurate this way. Uh, as I was saying, we are going to use the Hungarian Acute Pancreatitis Registry. Uh, we estimate uh, that uh, around 500 patients will have a uh, CT during their uh, hospital stay. We're going to gather the image, image files manually and uh, calculate the CT metrics using the 3D slicer program. And we're going to link uh, the outcomes to these metrics and uh, uh, publish the results. So in summary, my uh, two projects are uh, investigating the prevalence and uh, investigating the effect of body fat and acute pancreatitis. Uh, so thank you for your attention and I'm gonna finish with a quote from Nelson Mandela. It's always seems impossible until it's done. Thank you. Thank you for your great presentation. Uh, my question is about your second topic. Uh, do you know of any research about a model which directly connects uh, CT images with uh, the severity of AP? So some kind of end-to-end -end deep learning model, something like that. Do you know any uh, such model? I'm not aware uh, that it has been done before. Uh, there are some, uh, some uh, research about uh, body composition and uh, outcomes, but uh, most of them don't uh, have the same uh, cut off values uh, to to say that a patient is overweight or not, uh, so it's uh, kind of a new topic. Um, very nice uh, pre presentation on uh, clinically very re relevant topics. Um, my question is that uh, ultrasound is an important uh, decision making uh, point in in your study, and what is the sensitivity? of ultrasound for um, uh, splenic vein thrombosis, or how big is the inter-observer variance? Thank you for the question. So we have data that uh, in cases that uh, bowel gas is uh, not obstructive, uh, ultrasound is around 95% accurate in diagnosing SVT, especially with uh, color Doppler. Um, modes, uh, it can detect uh, the uh, stop of the flow. Uh, but uh, pancreatitis uh, induces uh, um, like a, an illus and, uh, and the accumulation of gas covers the retroperitoneum, so it's quite frequent to not see it in those vessels. Thank you for your presentation, it's a very interesting topic as well. I uh, would like to know which level of the CT scan you're going to use to have this body composition analysis. And if you are analyzing the uh, muscle attenuation as well, if you are going to include uh, hand grip strength in this uh, registry as well. Thank you for the questions. Uh, regarding your first question, um, most likely L3 is the uh, appropriate level to measure the 
composition, uh, Lombard tree uh, in axial slice. And um, uh, about the second question, we um, don't really, uh, uh, we want to investigate hand grip strength because this uh, study is a, uh, a registry analysis of patients who had pancreatitis almost from 10 years ago. And uh, we are just going to use the imaging files and their outcomes. So the, uh, this is one of the advantages of this study because it uses data that is readily available but not extracted yet. But we cannot investigate novel things, which is a disadvantage. The first is actually a little comment. And I mean, this is very important what you showed your second study is when there is a registry. I mean, that's an extremely useful thing. So, I mean, I would try to, I mean, emphasize this for all the students and actually supervisors that when a registry like this is available, I mean, fantastic things could be done. And that is already available, so you don't have to build it up again. So, I think this is very good. You can ask the question, too, that, that how are you going to analyze the data? Because then, then you will just get a cutoff of body fat over something or under something, or you will do coloration depending on the increasing body fat and then so, so, so do you already have plans for that, I mean, for the analysis of the data? We are not at that stage yet, but we were thinking about uh, uh, using the Z-scores uh, developed by, uh, uh, in North America by a team, uh, and uh, it's similar to bone density matrix, and they look uh, at patients uh, mm -hmm. and the values uh, of, for example, uh, body fat percentage, how far are they from the average uh, uh, for their corresponding age group and uh, sex group. So, for example, a 30-year-old female has, uh, for example, 20% body fat, which is normal, but for a 18-year-old uh, 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 or 14-year-old boy that would be like overweight and uh, the z-score accounts for that and uh, we would have better results this way i think mm -hmm.